Welcome to Think Tech on OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm Elise Anderson. And I'm Kaui Lucas. Our show this time will take us to the Runway to Runway program presented by Hawaiian Airlines at the Convention Center on November 11th. Runway to Runway was part of Fashion Week for 2016, a three-day program featuring local and visiting designers in the fashion industry. Honolulu Fashion Week came around a few weeks ago. It was on the 10th, 11th, and 12th of November, Thursday through Saturday. And good news, it was mostly free and open to the local public. On Thursday, the first day, there was the Asaf Ganad Fashion Show, featuring a collection of his work. This was followed by the Neiman Marcus program, The Art of Fashion, a collection of high-end designers. Thursday's runway featured trend-setting local designers who came to spotlight contemporary Hawaii fashion, including Allison Izu, Ten Tomorrow, Malia Jones, Ari South, and Kojo Couture. This was followed by a Live Aloha fashion show featuring Hawaii-based designers Noa Noa, Iolani Sportswear, Mana Ola Hawaii, and Manu Hea'ali'i. There was also the Ren Spooner fashion show celebrating its 60th anniversary and showcasing six decades of aloha wear. On Friday night, we took our cameras to the Hawaii Convention Center for the Hawaiian Airlines Runway to Runway event, a great play on words, where international celebrity designers rolled out collections inspired by the destination serviced by Hawaiian Airlines. It began with a chant. The first designs on the runway, as you might expect, were fashion designs for Hawaiian Airlines uniforms. Then there was a bevy of designers from various places, including Hawaii, New York, Japan, and Australia and featuring Dion Lee, Marissa Webb, Pelly, Yoon Hee Park, and Hawaii's own Jeffrey Yoshida. There were no speeches in the Runway to Runway program. What a relief. But the message was clear. Hawaii's become a notable force in fashion and can attract, participate in, and compete in high fashion from around the world.
my name is Vanessa Pack, and I designed the jewelry line that I'm debuting here at, at the Fashion Week. And I have a studio space in Wailua at the Sugar Mill. We uh, translate everything that we see in the ocean and our beautiful surroundings here in Hawaii into uh, metal designs and our um, look of choice is mixed metal so we love mixing the gold with the silver with the rose gold. We have our starfish and coral branch designs have been our most favorite here at Fashion Week and um, our website is www.vanessapack.com. My name is Jennifer Tudice. I am the owner and designer of Tiki Shiki Handbags. I'm here at the Honolulu Convention Center promoting my business and fashion and Hawaii tech. Um, we need to be motivated entrepreneurs. I've taken Japanese culture and Hawaiian textiles and combined them to make a bag called Tiki Shiki. Tiki Shiki is a blend of the furrow shiki method, which means wrapping with fabric, and Tiki, obviously, Hawaii. So it's an origami, reversible, washable, sizable handbag with a leather strap that I get made in the north of Portugal. And I started it all myself making everything. But now we're growing, right? So you start with a square. And then you take your square and you make a triangle. And then you tie two knots on either end of the triangle. And the key is to make your knots equal in distance and tight. Because the equal in distance creates symmetry in the bag. And then you pull it tight, and then you check. Do I have symmetry here? Yeah, pretty much. I'd pull this one down. There we go. And then you open it, and you flip the knots inside. Push down. There you have the sack portion of the bag. Then you take your handle, like an old belt buckle, you go through the two and then back through the one. This also sizes your bag, is how much tail you pull through. And then you do it again. Through the two, back through the one. And then here you have the Tiki Shiki handbags. My name is Irina Razovan and um, I presented my label Razovan. I'm fashion designer and now I presented my line of handbags. I like to experiment with um, shapes, with different uh, modern fabrics. For my collection I use neoprene and Cardura fabric is um, waterproof nylon, high technological fabric. My collection is about surfing and ocean and fun. Aloha, my name is Maylin Vitalivai, designer and co-owner of Missing Polynesia. I currently own a boutique behind Cutterford IEA. Um, we, we are a modern day Polynesian collective. Uh, just showcasing South Pacific designs uh, to tell from all over the South Pacific, modernizing it into our contemporary wear. Well, my name is Isaac Lani. Um, my partners are Travis, who's the founder of Haven, and we also have Kainoa here. Um, this is our logo right here. So HVN kind of you know, shows the flow of our business. Um, Haven. It stands for Haven, so Haven is pretty much of your, your safe haven, your sanctuary, your place of refuge. So we like to kind of put that into our lifestyle brand. I'm a surfer, uh, you know, I, when I'm in the zone and I surf and stuff, it's like I'm locked into the barrel, you know, you're just fully focused, no distractions around, and you're completely like in your vibe, momentum, nothing can stop you. So we kind of put that into our brand. We do things such as uh, beach cleanups, which is our, if you could check this out right here, here's a little picture of that. We got some, oh, we do beach cleanups, some microplastics there. 
So I have this little like volunteer entity, kind of like a non-profit thing, which is called the Haven Project. We also have these materials such as this hemp fiber, which we introduced at the fashion show this week. And we also have a bamboo fiber as well. Um, so we kind of just use that to kind of back up our whole concept of like giving back to the community and our Haven, which is pretty much like Hawaii, you know. This is Haven from Fashion Week Hawaii. This is Uni, and we're just going to ask her a few questions for you savvy chicks out there. So, what uh, what inspired this collection? Alice So she was inspired by Alice in Wonderland and she's always playing around with the prints and for this uh, collection she played around with the silhouettes collaborating with the prints. Very impressive! <laughs> and what does it mean to you to be part of Honolulu Fashion Week? Uh, uh, so it's her very first time coming to Hawaii and she's just honored to be here and to present her collection in Honolulu so she's super excited and happy about it. And what advice do you have for, for young girls with big dreams? Uh, so she wanted to be a designer when she was just a little girl and she kept on dreaming and trying hard on until she got to this point. So she wanted to say that dreaming is the best thing and just keep on dreaming until you get to the point. <laughs> did, did people tell you it wasn't possible? No, never. Yeah. <laughs> So she was always prepared and she was always preparing for her dream to come true and what she's saying is that how much you dream will make your dream come true. Aloha, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you.
The next day on Saturday, there was the Mauna Ola Hawaii Fashion Show, where Mauna Ola Yap showed his designs, which combined the aesthetics of two trends, traditional island wear and modern haute couture. There was also the Reach the Runway benefit, where Kini Zamora showcased his 2016 collection. Reach the Runway is a great program that creates mentorship opportunities for Oahu Middle School students interested in pursuing careers in the fashion industry. Then there was the Ward Village Fashion Show, which featured some of Hawaii's most popular retailers, including Big Bad Wolf, The Collective, Keolo Pico, Mori by Arden Flea, and Poshed by Valerie Joseph. And there was the Rinkogram Japanese Fashion Program, featuring a collection of pieces from Japanese model Rinka's fashion line, Li Hua. Finally, Hawaii Pacific Health presented its beautiful Survivors Fashion Show, dedicated to celebrating the survivors of life-threatening diseases. Yes, Fashion Week was ambitious, audacious, and a stunning success. And all this made it clear that the fashion industry, which has been struggling in Hawaii for many years, has come of age. We hope Hawaii's fashion industry will grow and grow to greater size and excellence, that it will attract and incentivize tons of talent, and that it will develop into a fashion center known around the world. Now this is the kind of diversification we like to see. And now let's take a look at our ThinkTech calendar of events going forward. So much is going on in Hawaii. Remember, you can watch ThinkTech on OC16 several times every week to stay current on what's happening in government, industry, academia, and communities around the state. ThinkTech will take you there. Remember also that ThinkTech broadcasts its daily talk shows live on the internet from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays, and then we broadcast our earlier shows all night long and on the weekend, and some people listen to them all night long and on the weekend. If you want to replay or share any of our shows, they're all archived on demand on thinktechhawaii.com and YouTube. For our audio stream, go to thinktechhawaii.com slash radio. Visit thinktechhawaii.com for our weekly calendar and live stream and YouTube links, or better yet, sign up on our email list and get the daily docket of our upcoming shows. ThinkTech has a high-tech green screen First Amendment studio at Pioneer Plaza. If you want to see it or be part of our live audience, or if you want to participate in our programs, contact Think at thinktechhawaii.com. Yes, you can help us raise public awareness on ThinkTech. Go ahead, give us a thumbs up on YouTube or send us a tweet at thinktechhi. We'd like to know how you feel about the issues and events that affect our lives in Hawaii. We want to stay in touch with you, and we'd like you to stay in touch with us. Let's think together. Here's this week's Think Tech commentary. No family is an island. It's Christmas time again, a time when many of us are busy with shopping, events for the kids, and wonderful celebrations. The holiday times can feel like a full-time occupation. Hawaii is a place where families gather, and it is always an important part of the family agenda to get together in the holiday season, all the way from Thanksgiving to New Year's. That means a lot of family meals and gatherings. But times have changed, and as elsewhere, the traditional nuclear family is not what it once was. 
The cost of living here has skyrocketed, putting stress on traditional family living arrangements, work schedules, and relationships. Many families have children who have moved to the mainland. Traffic has made it more and more difficult to get around the island. At the same time, we have many people here who do not have families here for them for one reason or another, or have been unable to establish the extended family we traditionally associate with Christmas. This can include people who are homeless, a severe problem in our state. The fraying of family and interpersonal relationships is an issue which is more poignant and perhaps more painful in the Christmas season. It can be a hard time for many people in what we consider the happiest time of the year. A lot of people are unhappy about being alone in the world where everyone around them seems to be together. This Christmas, ThinkTech would like to have a look at this phenomenon and help all of us meet some of the people who are here and who do not have large extended families and don't have people to shop for or invite for holiday parties. What is it like for them at the holidays? We will talk to individuals, families, and service providers to explore what is now happening here at holiday time. Is Hawaii still a place where strangers are welcomed into the home and the family table and in daily life? Or has the fabric of the culture changed? How does this affect us now? And will we become yet more and more isolated from each other in the future? What does that mean for our community and our future together in these islands? We will explore what this means for the aloha so many of us remember from all those big families and family gatherings in the holidays. We ask you to join us for this special Christmas show on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha, I'm Jay Fidel with this Think Tech commentary. You know, good information is at the heart of the Republic, but at what price? It's bad enough to have had to watch the campaign debates, but it's worse to have them in all the news punctuated with huge blocks of commercial messaging, including some really awful political commercials. It all seems part of an evolution calculated to drown us in bad commercials, bad messages. It's one thing if they could give us commercials that are informative or at least entertaining, but that's not what's happening. We see the worst possible commercials and messaging again and again. And for every minute of content we get, it certainly seems that we get twice that for repetitive and banal commercials. The elections are over, but what we saw during the campaign debates is likely to continue as the new normal. It's a chilling, almost intolerable prospect. What about avoiding them? You can walk out of the room or turn the channel off, but what about a good old-fashioned or new-fashioned tech solution? Some smart programmer could do this. Why don't we have a device that will block commercials on your TV the same way your email can block spam on your computer? This system would know or you could designate the commercials that are offensive to you. And when they come on the next time, it won't play them, or it will play something over them, perhaps Mozart. I don't think this would be hard. Certainly it's doable, and maybe some kid can get rich doing it. After all, there are lots of people who would pay extra to block insipid commercials. If we can pay to avoid online video ads, why can't we do that on TV, too. People are already voting by subscription. For a modest subscription, you can get content without commercials. Maybe that's why network TV is losing ground to movie subscription services. This would certainly make for a better TV experience. We can't live in a world where we're barraged by cheesy commercial messages all day. It's just too high a psychic price to pay. We have to do better, and they have to do better. If we don't, I'm afraid the existing model will change to something else, and that may or may not give us the quality of news and content we need. Mahalo, I'm Jay Fidel with this Think Tech commentary. We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of Think Tech. But first, we want to thank our underwriters.
K. Cowie. That wraps up this week's edition of Think Tech. Remember, you can watch Think Tech on OC16 several times every week. Can't get enough of it, just like Cowie does. For additional times, check out OC16.tv. For lots more Think Tech videos and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on Think Tech, visit thinktechhawaii.com. Be a guest or a host, a producer or an intern, and help us reach and have an impact on Hawaii. Thanks for being part of our Think Tech family and supporting our open discussion of tech, energy, diversification, and globalism in Hawaii, including, of course, fashion. You can watch this show throughout the week and tune in next Sunday evening for our next important weekly episode. I'm Elise Anderson. And I'm Kaui Lucas. Aloha, everyone. Mm -hmm.